Sage Wanderer here, and welcome to Quiffy Talk. <laughs> All right, no problems today, please. I'm trying to quit. So uh, today we're talking about interdimensional beings, disclosure, and demons. Don't don't don't. Just a reminder that Quaffy Talk is about conspiracy theories or paranormal things that I think are interesting but don't necessarily believe. So, what made me make another video about this topic? I've made quite a few in, in, in various forms. Well, there's been a new disclosure. A, uh, I think he's 87, an 87-year-old man, uh, who was the Israel's former space security general. Okay, so he was their uh, person in charge of space security. And we all know that Donald Trump just uh, started the Space Force. And now we have a United States Space, Space Force. I wish they would have had that when I was a kid, when I was young and spry and able. Because when I was a young guy, everybody used to call me Space Cadet. <laughs> hey, Space Cadet, get back to work. I can't help it. I'm a dreamer, and I think I'm not the only one. <laughs> so this former Israeli space security chief, a general, for more than 30 years in control of the government, uh, parts of the government over there in Israel, well, he's kind of at the end of his rope, and he's at the end of his life, and he thought, what the heck? With 2020 being as wild and weird as it is, now is as good a time as any to let the secret out. Aliens are real. Don't, don't, don't. <sighs> That's right. Aliens are real. He says so. He claims that the United States in particular and leaders from around the world are in touch with, interacting with, engaging with, and, uh, uh, and negotiating treaties with a federation. I find it interesting they call it the Federation of these aliens. It's a galactic federation. Where have I heard that phrase before? <laughs> For all you Trekkies out there, that's right, the Star Trek Federation. I find it interesting. Did Gene Rodenberry know about this all those many years ago? You know, that show is uh, 50 years old. I don't know. I've been watching it my whole dang life. <laughs> well, apparently, according to this Israeli uh, space chief, um, aliens are real. Trump knows about it. He was on the verge of disclosing it, but the aliens convinced him that would be a bad idea. So this Israeli guy went, I disagree. People need to know. I wish they'd just tell us. We need to know. Okay? <laughs> like anybody believe them. They could tell us the stone cold truth right now and nobody would believe them because so, so many lies are flying from every direction. You don't know what to believe. The answer is what the old skeptics used to say, and I've lived my life this way. Believe half of what you see and none of what you hear. That's why I need lots of coffee to swallow this one. But he claims that we have open negotiations and we are in a contract they have been waiting for us to be, I guess, intellectually aware enough to handle the idea of spaceships. I don't know. I mean, 50 years, 75 years, 100 years of sci-fi has gotten anybody ready that's going to get ready, I reckon. And maybe they're just waiting till, um, I don't know. Maybe, okay, if you look at the Federation, they like to disarm people. The only people that are allowed to have phasers are the people in the red and blue outfits, if you watch Star Trek. And uh, so gun control in the future is definitely part of Rodenberry's ideology. And if he got it from the aliens, that maybe they're waiting till America disarms. Maybe the alien federation are the ones really behind the new world order and the communist takeover. Don't, don't, don't. I mean, if the aliens aren't commies, then they probably need to give us some phasers and some and some truly bulletproof uh, uh, onesies and helmets so we can go drain the swamp and take care of the New World Order over here if they're on our side. But it makes me think that the aliens and the Federation might be the ones behind all of this genetic tampering through potentially through vaccines. Don't, don't, do right? 
and uh, potentially they're behind gun control, do do do, abortion, do do do. Uh, maybe they're behind um, the uh, Agenda Twenty One and the depopulation. Maybe it's the Georgia Guidestones or the New Ten Commandments from the alien overlords. And this is really no maybe, and I don't need much coffee for this because I've been convinced for some time that technology, modern technology, the, the technology we're using to communicate was not really invented by human beings, but it was backward, uh, backward engineered from alien technology that was captured. And then more recently, uh, along the Bill Gates and Microsoft and Internet age, that a lot of the silicone and, and Kevlar and a lot of this stuff is... Uh, uh, well, I shouldn't have said Kevlar, but like super high tech telecommunications and oh, pretty much social media, the hive mentality, all that stuff. Uh, we we negotiated with aliens to receive that, or well, that's a theory anyway. Uh, but here's the thing: I've if you ask a Christian what is an alien, and they will say it's a demon messing with your head. A lot of Christians will say that aliens are demons. And they'll go back to the fallen angels in the Old Testament. And they'll go back to... And, and I'm of the opinion that angels and demons are aliens. Which is a little bit backwards. I'm not saying that, that aliens are demons or angels pretending to be aliens. I'm more like that aliens are pretending to be angels and demons. But not really, to, not really pretending... I think there are two sides, and I wonder which side that Trump is negotiating with, but apparently, you know, he just inherited that. We've been negotiating with and interacting with these aliens for 30 years, according to this uh, Israeli uh, space chief. That'd be, wouldn't that be great to have on the door of your office? Space chief. Sage Wanderer. Space chief. <laughs> Garfield approves. <clears throat> so, what if, in fact, aliens are demons? That means that the technology, all the things I talked about, population control, um, you know, when I was growing up, nobody had cancer. I, I knew one old man that had cancer on his face and it rotted his face off, but I kept seeing him at the store every day, seeing perfectly healthy even though eventually I think they removed his lower jaw and he had to eat on a tube. Uh, they told me that was from chewing tobacco. I don't know. <laughs> but he's the only one I knew of. I didn't, there were no babies with cancer. Go back and look at the statistics. It'll rattle your brain. Once upon a time, people were generally healthy. Now they'll say, Sage, people are living longer. Yeah, because you're, you're keeping them alive with artificial uh, technologies and, you know, I, I tease my ex. She's got two titanium knees. I, I call her the bionic woman, or sometimes I call her cyborg. And, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, this technology is making people live longer, right? But uh, the death rates are way higher in things that, like cancer, and cancer especially. It's Cancer could be an alien... Uh, attempt to control our population, insert the do-do-do right here. So, if they're aliens, and the aliens are demons, right, and that we're being taken over by demons, then they're going to be against the patriots. They're going to be against church folk. They're going to be against people who who believe that humans should strive, or should thrive and go forth and multiply and prosper and that we should continue to bring this earth under our dominion until, <clears throat> and, until the entire earth is tamed. <laughs> That's kind of the Christian way of looking at things, is that the earth is to be tamed and to turn it into our Garden of Eden, that we're there to manicure and build on the garden. And I, I believe we've done that to a great degree. Uh, in the old days, if I wanted to go to uh, Oregon, for instance, which is now a lot of that beauty is burned up, but back in the day it was beautiful, and say go to Multnomah Falls, before there were interstate highways, that would have been a lifelong endeavor and it could have very well ended in my death in the attempt to get there from, from here. And now, 
I can teletransport almost on four wheels and be there so fast because of interstate highways. So one would think that the Western society ideology is more based on what we would call an angel, which are also aliens. <laughs> okay. Alien just means they ain't from around here. So you'd have to, you have to admit on that definition alone that, uh, that angels and demons are both aliens because they are not native to this earth. And then again, if you're into the whole, uh, the Garden of Eden was actually an alien civilization plant and we are hybrids that we are uh, part of this earth and part spirit. Like Genesis says, uh, God breathed into them, into man, the breath of life, and he became a living soul. So if you believe that way, then, uh, then the creator is the good alien, okay? The angel, the king of kings and lord of lords, the god of all gods, the king of all of this, of this federation, right? The head haunts you over all of it both good and bad, as the good and bad uh, battles against one another in the, in the ultimate universal struggle between good and evil, <clears throat> between dark and light. But the, the, the king creator is the one that made us and planted us here and gave us Western ideology and Western thinking. And the first commandment given to man from God after the fall was go forth and multiply. Wait a minute, <clears throat> I'm not up on my Genesis. I think God said that to us, the very first commandment, even before don't eat from the tree of good and evil was go forth and multiply. <clears throat> I'm going to have to go back and look that up. I'm sure it's in the comment section. You guys are on it. I mean, the book of, the book of Genesis and the creation story is like three, the creation story is like three pages, so. <laughs> depending on your Bible. So angels are aliens from the good side. And demons are angels, I mean, are, are fallen angels or demons from the dark side. So the big question is, if we are meeting with, with uh, aliens that have this galactic federation and they have a, um, and they have a, a base on Mars, apparently, according to this Israeli space chief, Sage Wonder, space chief. <laughs> if they have, I need some coffee for this. If we're doing this and we're in con we're in uh, contact with these aliens and they're waiting to disclose this and and maybe they will now because this guy kind of you know come out with it and if you think back a few years uh, we had a similar disclosure come from a Canadian uh, former prime minister of Canada uh, he came out late in life there's been a lot of deathbed confessions from everybody from CIA operatives to former heads of state and high level deep state people and military people who all say the same sort of thing. There's a whole bunch of aliens out there, both good and bad. There's a federation that wants us to join and we don't know how we feel about it. And they don't want us to disclose it because they're afraid people will freak out. And, um, but my question is to these aliens, what about God? <laughs> don't you need someone to pray to <laughs> that cares about you? <laughs> Sorry, I borrowed from Hart, I think. Uh, or Jefferson Airplane? I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, or Starship, Jefferson Starship. What about love? Don't you want someone to care about you? So how do these how do these Federation, Galactic Federation alien folk feel about God? Who do they see our Judeo-Christian God as? Who do they think Jesus was? These would be questions I'd want an answer to before I would proceed. And if they were there to tell me that none of this exists or that I've been duped or deceived, I think I would probably lean towards these are these aliens are demons. Another thing is uh, tempt them with situations where they can decide to do the right thing and therefore manifest the light or take advantage of the weak in some way and therefore manifest the dark side. So I think a great deal of discernment I mean, the Bible tells us to discern the spirits now, doesn't it? Yeah, I love how some people leave certain scriptures out of their thinking, but you know that that implies there's lots of spirits and they're they're of various intent and they need discernment. They need they need you to discern the spirits. So I would call these aliens at this point spirits, and we have to discern them. 
So I'd be a bit concerned that we're in that the minute that the Earth started engaging and inter and interacting with uh, these aliens, our techno technological abilities went through the roof, right? And our uh, and our morals and our family life and our sanity and our humanity and our mercy and our love and our justice went downhill during the same period of time. So it makes me think that these guys in the Galactic Federation aren't necessarily good guys. And, um, you know, uh, population control from an intergalactic planetary, planet, planetary perspective would probably be something they'd want to meddle in over here. So I just wonder how many generations they've been killing us, poisoning us. Um, maybe global warming is because they're doing it. Uh, I mean, are there any skeptics? I mean, do these people just meet these aliens and go, Oh, we bow down and worship you. Tell us what to do. Or is there somebody with their gun in their pocket going, I don't know if I trust this pointy-eared piece of crap. <laughs> they, need to, they need some more people like Sage or the old Marine who look at them crossways and go, Hmm, you smell funny. What are you made of? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe all that's already been thought of. But I will say that this technology, this modern time, um, if they're if they've been interacting us with us from for thirty to fifty to sixty seventy five years, maybe since Roswell, potentially. I mean, there's that whole thing where uh, under the Eisenhower White House, uh, apparently, according to a lot of sources, and and there's even some pictures that uh, used to exist more but have been deleted from the from the go back machine but you might find them of lights over the white house and uh, purportedly aliens landing at the white house and talking to eisenhower and it was a big deal and they covered it up and i mean you go way down the alien rabbit hole but my big question is are they good guys or are they bad guys and how do they feel about about uh, Late-term abortion, how do they feel about euthanasia? How do they feel about mercy and the death penalty and things like that? I'd like to know how they feel about justice. What is their idea of justice? I mean, you don't just jump into bed with the first interplanetary trash that white, that comes through your, through your uh, galaxy or whatever, through your end of the solar system, which brings me to another point. Um, so... What about Nibiru? I mean, why now? Why are the aliens here now? Have they always been here? When did they get the ability to get here and how long have they been watching us? That's some other stuff I'd want to know, right? And, but, because I have, I have a theory. I'm a student of history. I started with the Bible, aligning it with, with earth history, and then I got really obsessed with prehistory and specifically pre-flood history and the ancient flood. And you've heard me talk about the big trees on this channel and whatnot, how, uh, why the fallen angels cut down all the trees. And so it it makes me wonder if these aren't, these aliens, this, this federation, aren't just a bunch of pirates that go around from planet to planet uh, having their way with people. And this isn't the first time they visited us because there was a time in mythology, they call it mythology, but it, maybe it's ancient history, where these god men ruled over us and they and we sacrificed our children to them and they ate they they ate our babies and they and they were they were very uh uh child had like a childlike rage and jealousy and they fought amongst themselves and there were wars on the earth you can find this in ancient indian text in the greek mythologies and roman mythology and uh you know they gave us a lot of things but at a very high price let me repeat this the ancient gods gave us a lot of things, but at a very high price. And now what I'm thinking is they're back. And at what price are we paying? You know, another thing that's strange, there's an old silver haired guy that's still around on television. I forget his name, but he started the television show America's Most Wanted. And he started that show because his little boy was snatched out of Kmart and they found his decapitated body in a bar ditch in, uh, in Florida. And so that became this man became a crusader, and um, but I remember before that why we, the world and the nation was shocked with him because kids didn't get kidnapped out of Kmart. When I was a little kid, kids ran loose in Kmart. 
Kmart was the funnest thing in 1974. There wasn't a funner place on earth for kids. Forget Toys R Us. That was for the spoiled next generation. Give me Kmart, 1974. We had real cap guns. We had real dart guns that shoot rubber darts. And we could go into there and just run wild while our mama shopped. Right? And, man, I'm telling you, I some of my best, um, like, before Nerf guns, we had the little rubber dart gun, the little rubber dart gun wars. And, I mean, cap guns, bat, 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 bat. People just ignored us. You know? If, a, if an adult came in there to shop, or whatever in our area, we'd all go and stop and move over to another aisle or something and do something different until they left and be like, game on! Because people didn't snatch kids. They helped kids that were lost find their parents. But about the same time that these aliens started giving us this technology, our babies started disappearing. Think about that. Millions of missing and exploited children every day in America. And I'm here to tell you, it didn't used to be that way. Kids used to be safe in America. So I don't trust them if they are real. If aliens are real, then um, we need to kill a few of them, steal their laser radar guns or whatever they're using, Hijack one of their spacecrafts and go check out where they live. <laughs> but I'm just a crazy old coot who's almost out of coffee. So what do you think? Tell me in the comments section whether you think this uh, Israeli guy is out of his ever-loving mind. Or whether he and the former uh, Canadian Prime Minister and other high-level people who say that aliens are real and we're in negotiations with them... Are we literally making deals with the devil on a planetary basis? And is that what our culture war is really about? And is the civil war that's about to break out in America simply contrived by an off planetary force who wants to disarm Americans so they can bring about a global government and inter introduce us to the galactic federation of baby killing vampires? God help us! We'll see you next time. On Coffee Talk!